Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Lisa's Pages. This is gonna be part two in my series of how to make a junk journal. Um, this video is going to cover how I go about adding some extra fluff to the middle of the signatures, like pockets and belly bands, um, so that we can um, have our signatures ready to go when we wanna sew them into the spine. Um, the other thing I'm gonna show you is how to make the spine um, and how to measure the spine. And then for the next video, um, I'm going to cover sewing the actual signatures into the spine and then taking that spine and making a cover um, and ultimately finishing the journal. Um, and then there will probably be a final video where I go in and add ephemera and some final touches um, and just kind of wrap everything up. Um, I will warn you, this video cuts off rather abruptly. That is because I um, got cut off filming by my, um, my phone. It ran out of space because I hadn't cleaned up my old video clips, so I had way too much stuff in my phone and it just cut me off. And um, I actually did work, continue working for quite a while before I realized it. Um, but the part where it cuts off, it's um, I'm gonna just pick back up there when I start the next video. And it is kind of near where the cutoff would be anyways. So just follow me up until it cuts off and get yourself ready to do the next video, which um, I'm already almost done with. So that video will come out sooner as comparatively to this one. Um, and then I do have my usual question for you guys. So in the comments, if you would let me know, what are your favorite color palettes? So if you had to pick a three color color palette um, to work with in an entire journal and you couldn't use any other colors, what would those three colors be? Um, I'd love to hear from you about that one. Um, as you guys know, I love color, but I also love neutrals. And so I think if I had to pick a palette, it would be brown, white, and black. Um, but that being said, I also really love turquoise and orange together. Um, so maybe like a turquoise, orange, white, or turquoise, orange, yellow. I'd have to even think about my own questions more. Um, but yeah, let me know what you, what you think. And um, without further ado, let's get some pockets sewn into signatures. So to start with, I've got the signatures we made last time. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff to make pockets and tags and belly bands um, and tuck spots. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's get started. Um, I have a few pockets already made. Let me find those under the lace and such. Now these I made following, I believe it's the paper outpost. Um, and I will link all of the pockets that I, um, vid videos to the tutorials on pockets that I already made for you guys. So you can make them too. Um, these are just really nice th three tiered, really super, super simple single book page pockets. I made one in each fall color, one for each signature. Um, I only made one of these. This was a tutorial by Joey Defee and I'll link that as well. Um, so we got a pocket here, a pocket here, pocket here, or kind of a pocket tuck spot here and a pocket here. Um, I only made one of these. I'm thinking that we'll put it in one of the signatures that looks a little smaller than the others. Um, at this point, the signatures may start to vary in width. Um, so I just kind of keep an eye on that as I'm adding stuff and I might add more to one that looks a little thinner, if that makes sense. Um, and then I have some, a couple of little tiny, these are super cute for like a small tag or a mini journaling spot. Um, and they would look good on a page that I don't want to cover up very much. So just a couple of those. Um, it's just a single book page that's been turned into a pocket. Um, it was one that I used my brayer on after doing a jelly print. Um, I had a little too much paint, so I brayered onto this book page. So it's got a little color to it and it's yellow, so it goes with the fall theme. Um, these pages were yellow, so they went with the fall theme. They are a vintage um, assembly for some kind of computer part. They're kind of cool looking. Um, so I made, so these are gonna be flip out pockets. So I will attach one, the back of one of the pockets, probably the back of this pocket, and then it'll flip out and you'll have a pocket here and a pocket here. And I am gonna sew around the edges. Um, maybe this was the paper outpost. One of the pockets was the paper outpost and one of them was um, Rach and Bella Crafts, I believe. I'll, I'll have it sorted out in the comments. Um, I did change the way that they make the pockets slightly just by adding 
uh, a little bit of thickness to the outer edge just to give it a little extra strength because my papers were so thin. Um, so I'll show you how I make these. So I made two and we're going to make one more. So let's just do that now. And let's hope I can remember <laughs> how I made these. So, and I just want this one to be, just keep in mind that um, the finished product, which will be about a quarter, slightly less, um, slightly less on the length, slightly more on the width than the page you're using. Just make sure that that will fit inside of your journal. Um, so I've already done that. Um, so I want to keep, keep the width the same. Maybe I want, I want this on the outside. <clears throat> I'm just going to fold the edges so that it's the length that we want, or just, just enough, um, about a quarter of an inch so that you are strengthening the edge of the page a little bit. If you are using thin paper, you can skip this step if you're not, if you're using a, a thick book page or something like that, definitely skip, you can skip this step. That's about right. And then all we have to do is glue those two down. Um, I am going to miter them a little bit just so we don't have any stuff sticking out. So just a little tiny sliver here, little tiny sliver here, little tiny sliver here, little tiny sliver here. Hopefully, I'm sure I'm off camera. Okay, sorry guys. Let me make sure I'm in camera. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm good. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a lot easier to do this sitting down, but then I can't see what well, you guys can see. Then you're gonna fold this up about a third of the way. I'm just gonna use the other pocket to measure. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. They're all going in different signatures. It's not like they'll be next to each other. I'm just gonna hop out my bone folder and sharpen up my creases and oh, Now that we've done that, unfold again, we're going to miter these now. So the easiest way to do that is just to completely unfold and then fold on your pocket edge. And then this little tab here, we're just going to slice a little V without cutting our fingers. And the same thing over here so that we've got all these edges mitered. And now we're just going to glue those down. I did go and fully, as much as was physically possible, clean my cutting board. You can see it's not perfect, um, but I got a lot of glue and paint off of it. Going to try to be a little more careful going forward. I have a tendency to go all the way to the edge with the glue stick and, I don't know, go off the paper a little bit. So we're just gluing down these side tabs. And again, this is just to give it a little extra strength. This is not in the original tutorial for these pockets. And that's why I'm showing you how I did it. And now fold the pocket back up into place. Put your lid on your glue stick. <laughs> and just fold this guy in half. Really simple. And so we're gonna sew on each of these um, all the way around the edge and down the middle. And I'm gonna wait on that because I'm just gonna try to do all of my sewing at once. Normally, I actually just get the sewing machine out and I take it out and I put it back and I take it out and I put it back several times just because um, it's kind of hard for me to keep track of everything. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and sew these right now. Um, just so you guys know, I am neurodivergent. I have ADHD and um, I have to do things in a certain way so that I don't... Because if I make a big stack of things that I need to sew, I'll forget what I have to sew on which piece and I'll inevitably sew a belly band horizontally across the page or you know, who knows? I, I've made all kinds of mistakes in the past. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew these now. Um, I may cut this. I'll see if I can get you guys a good view of my sewing machine at all. Okay. Back you guys up a little bit. There we go. 
And I'm such a hoarder, I, I've started keeping thread scraps for things. <laughs> so I don't want green thread, so I'm going to go ahead and take out my green thread. And I'm going to go grab black because I think black will look good with this page. I did use red on some of these pockets, which I like for the fall theme. Maybe I should just use, yeah, I'll, I'll use red. Red and yellow, and then it'll be a fall. And I know it's really late in the season for fall. I'm planning on finishing this journal no later than December 1st, and then I'll have it ready to journal in next year at the beginning of autumn. Um, it is, it has been a very slow autumn this year, so it's been very warm in Minnesota, unseasonably warm. Uh, my sewing machine is a Brother XM2701. It doesn't have a ton of fancy stitches, but it does all of the things I needed to do. And um, it's, a, it's a good machine. It's inexpensive. It does thread the bobbin for me, so I'm lucky in that regard. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a cough. I've had some allergies. And that's just gotten me a little stuffed up. Sorry guys, I probably should have had my thread ready. All right, turn it on. And, and it's such a lightweight machine. I have a very small, small space, so I can just pick it up, put it on my desk when I'm using it, and then take it off my desk when I'm not using it. So I really like that. All right, let's get these guys sewn. I think I will go on a straight stitch for these, or I may start with a straight switch, straight stitch and switch to a zigzag. Um, there's a few good videos out there on sewing on paper and sewing in your junk journals if you need more advice. Um, I will say you want your tension a little higher than normal probably, although you'll have to play around with it. And um, the other thing is that you'll want your stitch length to be pretty high because if you have it all the way down on one, um, the stitches are really close together and it perforates your pages. Um, so basically your pages will just tear in half. All right, <clears throat> here we go. I switch to a zigzag and then I switch to a zigzag. I like to reduce my stitch length because stitches are no longer right next to each other. Switch back to a straight stitch. I just like the way it looks to have a little variant. Okay, we're gonna turn the corner here. Um, when you're turning the corner, you just wanna sink your needle, lift your foot, and turn the paper. Um, I will say something that I haven't seen mentioned in sewing videos that I find really helpful is if you're if you're here and you're trying to get closer to the edge of the paper, but you know the next stitch is gonna go off, you can lower your stitch length, go one more stitch, and it'll be a shorter stitch. Then turn it back and then rotate your paper and then you'll be closer to the edge of the paper if, if you're like too too far but not close enough. You know what I'm saying. Switch to a zigzag. Switch to straight. I will say the pedal on this machine is very sensitive. It's kind of hard to go slow. Like you're either going super fast or you're not going at all. So I use the hand crank quite a bit. Switch back to a zigzag here for a minute. Switch back to a straight stitch. Do a little bit more zigzag on this side. One straight stitch to get me to the edge. Nope, we're gonna do one in a little bit. A little zigzag action. We've sewn all the way around. 
and it looks like this. And now we just want to sew down. In the video, she does it just down the center, but I kind of want to sew one down each side. I think that'll look better. Or I think I think that it might crease better. That way. Sorry, I bumped you guys. Switch back to straight stitch. So that's one side, and then we'll do the other side. So here's our finished pocket. Like I said, um, if it was the right hand side of the page, I would just glue this side and then it'll flip out. And we'll pick pages to put those on. And we'll go ahead and I'll fast forward while I do these other ones. Okay, so we got the sewing out of the way. These are how these look. I like them. I'm really glad I picked red. It really ties in the fall theme because they're not fall themed otherwise. All right, so let's go ahead and just find somewhere in the signatures to put each of these. And while we're at it, let's add in the other already finished pockets. And then after that, we'll make some more. Um, all right, let's get started. Um, now this is a really plain page. It's also nice and sturdy, which is what I was looking for for this pocket. Um, so that might be an option for that pocket. Don't want yellow next to yellow. This is also a really nice sturdy page. I don't like that. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's put. Well, let's put this guy here. Before I do that, I'm going to ink the edge of this side here. So I'm going to glue this pocket in. And for pockets, I always like to use um, tacky glue, glitter glue. I wish I had glitter glue because it's a little bit better. But I got a really good deal on three of these. And it's like a secondary. It's a little thicker than glitter glue, and that's kind of annoying. I also haven't taken the time to put it in a better bottle. Um, but I find I can get a pretty small amount as long as I'm careful about how I'm applying it. I mean, I obviously can't get a tiny tiny skinny little line but if you kind of use the nozzle to spread it as you go you won't get as big of globs and the globs are what tend to work their way to the edge of the page and sneak out but if you do have some of that it's not a big deal you just clean it up all right so like i was saying i'm gonna glue it this way because i want it to be a fold out so all the pages on the signature. So when you're flipping through, you get to this page and you flip it out instead of flipping it in. Still not sure about this one. Worry about him later. Um, we need one of these guys in this signature. Um, 
Oh, I'm gonna have to sew my envelope pockets still. Haven't done that yet. So I'll probably pause at some point to do that. I don't hate it there. Don't hate it there either. The thing about having it here is that the tuck spots kind of lean. So I think I want this on the right side of the page. I quite like that. I like the orange and the orange. Although there's quite a few fairly boring pages. Maybe I'll put it here. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I like the yellow one. So this was um, Distress ink in fossilized amber that I edged the paper with, if you wanted to know. And then I stitched around the edge of this pocket, just for the appearance. You can also make this pocket, any of these pockets, with just glue alone. And next door, there's some work being done. So if you hear hammering, that's what's up. Oop, don't glue it on upside down. This paper has a bit of a tear here. I think I'll take advantage of this to strengthen that tear. And then just make sure no glue comes through to the other side. Usually I don't add ephemera to the pockets before sewing in because it tends to fall out when you're sewing it in. Um, it is true you want to give it as much bulk as you can to start, but you know, if anyone uses this journal as a true junk journal, they're going to add more pockets and more ephemera, and it's just going to keep bulking out. So you're, you're always going to get a little bit of an alligator mouth, but my goal is to not have an alligator mouth when you start. That way there's room for the journal to grow, because if you start with an alligator mouth, then then it's kind of like, well, I can't add anything. It's going to get too crazy. I'm not going to be able to close it. Okay, so I get a little sidetracked. Am I missing any pockets? Oh, yes. One of these little tiny guys. And I wanted to put those on like a decorative page where they would look nice. That could be cute. Oh, yeah, we wanted one on my mushroom page. So which side do I like? This side has a little purple in it. I think I like the brighter yellow. That's the first signature. Now the second signature. I'm just gonna be unclipping these for now. We want one of these. Possibly on the left side since we've put so many pockets on the right already. I like it there. Not block our beautiful turkey. Oh, there's yellow here. Maybe that's too much yellow. No, actually, I like that. Let's do it. Quick decisions, because we're doing a lot of work today. So, you know, you don't have to spend 20 minutes deciding where to put each thing. You can, if that's how you want to roll. But since I'm trying to film this, I'm going to be making really quick decisions. Here's that pocket. And we need one of these two. I love the I love flip outs. Flip outs are the best. So if you didn't work any flip outs into your signature, like I did not, fear not, you can always add them after the fact. I think putting one here would be so fantastic. I mean, it was just meant to go here, or actually, it was meant to go here. But I don't like the background of this wallpaper, 
So I am going to try to find something to cover that up. I want some gold. Yep, I like that. So I'm just going to take this and do a real quick snip snip. Be right back. Okie doke. And I'm going to glue that in place. Should be. Yeah, it's straight. This is the thing about this glue. Does anyone know how you're supposed to thin out glue? I've heard, I've heard isopropyl alcohol. I've heard acetone. If you know, leave it in the comments. Um, Cause I'd love to add just something to make this glue the tiniest bit more viscous or less viscous. Cause it's very thick, which can be really good for some things. But for most of the things I use it for, I could use it a little thinner and then it wouldn't take so long to get it to come out. Is there anywhere ooh, we want to put this? I do rather like that. I also kind of like that. Oh, and you know what else? I decided I'm just going to go for it with these already curled pages because they've already been bent. So we'll just leave them as pullouts, even though they don't pull out farther than the book. I think that's just fine. It's still kind of something fun to do as you're flipping through to grab hold of. We can add a nice tab or a side cut here. I think as I work, sorry guys. Um, What about right here? Yeah, I just want to get this down. Okay, third and final signature. We need these three pockets. I like that and I'm just gonna go for it. I actually think I'm gonna put it up. It should be like this. All right, more pockets. Big blank page. I want to edge this page in that same orange. I think that'll look awesome, don't you guys? use a little something like here I might do a pocket maybe not it doesn't quite work there for me oh yeah the back of this bag heck yeah Really like how that looks. Stuff down. Okay, so those are all our pre-made pockets. I have this. Um, this is my first ever embossing powder attempt. I'm still waiting on my embossing ink pad. Um, so I had to use glue 
So I got it's very raised because of the glue. Um, so you can see it's super shiny. Um, and I think, yeah, the width is right. We can use this to make three belly bands, one for each signature. So let me just do some clipping here um, to give this a little bit more of layers. I'm gonna, I have set aside a few different um, scrapbooking pages that I thought were fall themed. So this color is called Tattered Rose. It's Distress Embossing Powder. It's really pretty orangey yellow, orangey gold, almost like a rose gold, but more orange. Okay, so looking at these off the bat, I think I really like the green one because it's darker. Actually, I like the red one too. And the green isn't as fall-ish. I'm actually not sure why. Um, yeah, let's do this red one. So I'm just going to do a couple snips so that I've got just a little bit of an edge on each of these. Just a minute on that. Okay, so I've got these all glued down, and I think they look really nice. This one's a little off-center. I'm just going to trim it a little bit. Hang on. Perfect. <laughs> Um, so these are going to be horizontal belly bands, obviously, based on their width. Um, so we'll just find a page in each signature to put each one. Not bad. Not bad, that's where I'm gonna put it. <clears throat> shake, shake, shake. Shake, 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 senora. Shake your body fine. I just uh, watched Beetlejuice the other day. What a classic. I actually watched it on, on Halloween, or the day before Halloween. Um, my best friend Raleigh, rest in peace. That was one of his favorite movies, so I always think of him when I watch it. Um, this one may have been a little bit big. Yep, just a tiny bit big for this page. Just gonna let that dry and then I'll trim it. There's those belly bands done. Now I want to add some fabric. This actually makes a really great horizontal belly band. I can make two out of it. So I'm going to do two more horizontal belly bands. And one reason it's great to do your horizontal belly bands now is that um, once you bind the pages in, they start to curl like this and it can be hard to glue straight your belly band. Let's see which two are thinner. The back one and the front are the thinner ones, so we're going to add this to those. I actually think I want to add it straight to this very first page. Maybe up a little bit? Yeah.
think I want to add this to one of these to give it more strength. Actually, we're going to use Fabri-Tac. And I know a lot of people use Fabri-Tac 3-in-1, all those similar ones, um, all the time. And you certainly can. It works great on paper. The only reason I don't is because it's more expensive than Tacky Glue. So I tend to only use it when I know I need the extra strength. Um, like when I'm gluing chunky fabric. But if it's easier for you to just have one glue... That would be the glue I would recommend. That and a glue stick, you kind of need both. But I avoid using the glue stick anywhere where I need strength, unless it's very thin paper. Keep my cutting board clean. one. I want to add this as a tab to one of the pages. Let's do this one. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. And I'll probably sew on a few more and then I'll come back and show you what I got. Okay, I got my lace sewn in. So I did one per signature and I think that's enough. Um, you can do more, you can do less. I was thinking about doing some fabric tabs, but I can always add those on later. So I think I'm good with how it is for now. Um, this lace is actually, I don't know if you can see, it's Christmas trees. So it is Christmas, but I mean, pine trees and the color red, colors red and gold, those are fall things too. So I don't think it has to be Christmas. And now for the final thing before I figure out how to sew these together, I'm going to just go through and any like completely white things um, that I don't like, I'm going to um, ink them up. Oh, and I also need to sew together these envelopes. So I'm going to be right back again and have that all ready. And then we will go over how to get the signatures sewn in. All right. So I went ahead and um, did the edges of all the paper. And I also did some in red and orange and yellow because... I want it to look like fall. Where are they? Oh, there. Yellow. Um, and then we have one last thing to do, and I already did it for the other ones, but I thought I'd just save one for you guys. Um, anywhere that you have pockets all ready to go, now is the time to glue them down. And we're just gonna run a little glue along each side to leave the pocket open and that is it getting any uh, excess off all right got my glue here My wipes are all messed up. They're not pulling out one at a time. They're pulling out five or six at a time. That doesn't work. Okay. Hopefully that's a little more dry by now. Pop that sucker back in. And...
we are ready to bind. I'm going to zoom us out a little bit. Okay. So when I'm binding, and I usually just use the grid on my cutting board, but make it easier for you guys to see. What we're first going to do, um, I'm going to do a hidden, a hidden spine for this junk journal. It's how I usually do them. Um, so we're going to make just the spine, sew the signatures into the spine, and then glue that spine into the finished cover. Take your three signatures and get them so that they're kind of flat like this, right? Um, but loose. And you want to measure how far apart they're laying. Because each time you make a junk journal, it's going to be different. So these are laying about pretty much exactly a half an inch apart. So that's how I'm going to do my spine. I'm going to put each signature, each signature gets sewn in and each sewing um, line will be a half inch apart. So now we need to make our spine. And for this, for this, I'm just going to use a cereal box. I'm just going to go ahead and just use that corner as convenient. And this side is squared up. I'm going to square up the top. And then since each signature is going to be a half inch apart, we'll need um, one and a half inches worth of signature space. And then I like to do a quarter inch on each side um, to give you extra spine space. So that would be um, two inches total. So I'm gonna mark, well, first I'm gonna square this up so that we're not cutting at a weird angle. So I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of my lines on my cutting board. And then line up my ruler with the lines on my cutting board. Take my handy dandy retractable box cutter. And give it a good cut. Now this is a perfect right angle here. So we're gonna cut from the top and the bottom. Um, and then we want it two inches across. So actually to make this easy, I'm just going to use my cutting board instead of making marks, but you can certainly do it that way. And then we're going to measure the height of our junk journal. Which I am going to use the ruler for that. And for this is just a personal preference. I'm measuring in centimeters because I think they're easier to take halves of. So we're sitting at 22 centimeters. And for the spine, I'm going to give it an extra half a centimeter on each side. So we're going to do a total of 23 centimeters. I'm going to get in the camera here for a second. Same thing this way. 23 centimeters. And then we can just cut across there. Two marks that I just made. Oops, I slid. And there is our spine. We've got a spine. All right. 
Now, before we cover the spine, I like to draw out the measurements on it. It's a lot easier to do now than it is later. So first we're gonna make a vertical line for each signature. So remember we did this and I forgot already at two inches. So we're gonna make a mark halfway in between there. And then we're gonna make a mark a half inch from that mark on the right and a half inch from that mark on the left because we said each signature is gonna be half an inch apart. Remember when we measured those signatures on their side. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Make a mark halfway and half an inch apart. And then we're going to take our ruler and just make those into lines. And so just in case you're confused, each signature will be sewn onto one of these lines, right? Hope that makes sense. I hope you guys can see okay. There we go. So that one will be sewn there. All right. Now we said this has a height of 23. So half of 23 is 11 and a half centimeters. So at 11 and a half centimeters, Hang on, I gotta get in your way again. Ah, sorry, this is so hard on camera, you guys. Oh dear. Every time I move it, it goes too far, okay. Eleven and a half centimeters is the exact center point. And the same on this side. And then we connect that. And now it's a good part, point to just choose a top. Um, it can matter if you measure wrong or, yeah, it just helps to have one label top. And I put it right here a little bit away from the edge and the top and you'll see why that is so that we can see it. And now I'm going to bind these with um, five holes in each signature and we're gonna do very simple, very, the most simple type of binding. It's called a pamphlet stitch and we'll do a five hole pamphlet stitch. So from each, see how many inches we got? One, two, three, four. Um, So I'm just going to say two inches from the center will be our first hole, one, two, and then two more inches will be our other hole. And you're going to do the same thing up here. So one, two inches and one, two, two inches. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. I'll just put it at the five so it's easier to see. Sorry, I just picked a random number. So from the five, we're gonna go two inches to the seven and then two inches to the nine. And then from the five again, we're gonna go two inches to the left, which is three and two inches to the left again, which is one. And then we're gonna take those marks and we're just gonna cross them all the way into lines again. And the reason I've chosen five holes instead of three is because this is a relatively tall journal. And when you only bind it in three holes, there's more of a chance for like smaller, like this envelope could only get one stitch and then it would be loosey goosey in here. Um, so it's good to divide it up um, a little bit more when you have a taller journal, especially if you have a lot of small pages. 
because the um, kind of traditional version of the pamphlet stitch does involve three. But we're still going to do the pamphlet stitch, still the exact same style if you've done it before. Super simple. All right. So now what you'll see is we have one, two, three, four, five lines intersecting one, two, three vertical lines. So these are our signatures and these mark our holes. So what I like to do here is just at each intersection, make oops, an X. Every place we put an X, there's going to be a hole. Um, now we've measured this out. Um, we are going to take our signatures and we're going to line each one up. And I just realized, you guys, I made, I made our holes too far apart. I made them an inch apart. They should have been three quarters of an inch apart. So let's just redo that. All right, so redoing this, three quarters of an inch, which is, ah, oh, shucks. This ruler is terrible. I have to do it upside down. <clears throat> Three quarters of an inch is going to be there, and then one, two, three. Wait, I did them each. Oh, I did them each two inches apart. One inch isn't going to be quite enough, so let's do one and a half. So one and a half inches. One and a half inches. Oh, that's much better. Okay. One and a half inches. One and a half inches. And the reason I'm redoing this is my top holes were too close to the edge. You don't need holes that close to the edge of the paper. You want to space them out evenly through the page, but you don't need them to cover the bottom of, or the top of the pages. So we're going to do one and a half inches, one and a half inches. One and a half, one and a half, and cross our lines. Make our exit. So basically what you're wanting to have for your spacing is have them pretty evenly spaced along the length of the page, ignoring probably about the bottom inch or half inch. I mean, it depends how big your, page, your book is. Um, the other thing we want to mark is remember, um, this was 23 centimeters. We added an extra centimeter to the top. Hang on, this isn't square. I'm just going to square that up a little bit. There we go. Um, so we're going to mark half a centimeter at each. That way we know where to place our page along the signature. So once again, just half, we're making a half a centimeter mark from both the top and the bottom of the page.
so the signatures are going to be in between those two marks, see? So then we can take each signature, line it up, and we are going to mark on the outside of this page of the signature where these holes sit. right on that X you made. So we've got five marks on our signature. We're gonna do the same thing with the second signature. 